Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope wherever you are, you're healthy, safe, happy, and uh, keeping yourself busy in these strange, strange times. So this is part of the video that I said I will be doing. Hopefully uh, we can produce one of these per week. Uh, I would like to get some feedback from the audience watching and if you have any questions and things you want to learn, things you're not sure about, uh, send them through and we can go over them in these videos. So as a part of today, I've decided to just go over the basics and uh, show you some of the things that uh, has been put together for you. Uh, and we have old mate here watching over us. Uh, so hopefully everything goes well. So as we move forward, these videos will change. Uh, I will adjust the quality. I will adjust the room and everything else to make it a, you know, more presentable and uh, less distracting. So before we start off, my name is Amin Rafi. I'm not sure how many of you know me. Uh, the, the ones that do know a bit about my past and what I've been involved with over the last, God, how many years is it now? Seven or eight years. And uh, I'll put some descriptions in the next video as to what I've done. Though, just a summary, uh, I have taught blockchain-based technologies and applications, as well as decentralized technologies in three different continents where I have lived. So that would include Australia, Australia, Asia, uh, Europe, and uh, America, uh, mostly within Mexico. So those are the places I've been. Blockchain protocols and the way they are understood and utilized within different continents uh, differs greatly and depending on where you are people have different uses for it and different opinions about it and the way the development occurs and its applications are uh, quite varied and we will go over all of these things uh, and I aim to have various topics to discuss so some of these include crypto ethics, which I think is quite important. A lot of people don't know that this space is actually uh, built around certain principles and uh, these things are quite important to establish so that people that come into the space understand that it's not just the technology, it also comes with a certain way of thinking, or at least not, not so much thinking, though behavior. So for example, privacy is important. Um, respecting other peers and how they would like to do their work is important and uh, the lack of hierarchy and more implementation of task oriented uh, paths and such things and a lot more involved in that though that's just some basic uh, to, to give you good understanding and then we'll go over crypto history which I think is quite important to note how different projects have attempted to bring forth uh, various technologies and uh, implementations of decentralized technologies. And then innovation. I, I believe there's a lot of projects out there that have done amazing things, though, unfortunately, due to hype, news, and the financial reasonings, they may have been left in the dark a bit and I would love to go over these technologies and innovations and show you uh, different projects that have uh, implemented such things so for example uh, to give you a, you know a small sample of that it would be that the average person thinks cryptocurrencies and then they think Bitcoin and they think oh what a huge waste of power even though that's a debate on its own which we can discuss and we will actually uh, there are other mes methods um, of mining that do not require huge computational power or if they do, they're done in a different way which uses them uh, in a way that you could argue was not 
you know, I have to be careful with my words because some people may say it's being wasted. I don't see it that way, um, but utilize in a different way, let's say. And uh, we will discuss all of these things. And of course, the basics of what is a cryptocurrency, how these apply to your daily life, how you can get involved, where you can purchase it, and uh, where, you can you, uh, where you can spend it, and how to find these locations, how to find other people that are involved with it, and uh, the security parameters behind it, how to keep yourself safe and your cryptocurrency is secure. These are very important notes uh, that I think would benefit people greatly. And the other aspect is how to have a Swiss bank in your bank account. It's just that simple. I think personally it surpasses a Swiss bank because that still requires a physical location. I believe what Bitcoin has to offer and other cryptocurrencies is that you become your own bank and it adds to self sovereignty so these are some of the aspects uh, we will discuss the course will begin next week and look we're setting everything up uh, the foundation has been set up quite nicely uh, we've been working quite hard on that and making sure everything's in place and it's important to note that and uh, yeah, so today I'll just show you some basics and hopefully we can go from there. So those of you that want to partake in Bitopia, um, I just want to note as well that Bitopia isn't about uh, offering courses or education on blockchain. It does use that technology to solidify itself in a way that makes it censorship resistant, accessible, and other things that are quite important, and we need these. And if you wanna learn more, there's a, we did an introduction video to kind of you, give you a glimpse, and uh, I will discuss these important factors more thoroughly next time, uh, because I do wanna focus on a bit more, just the introduction, keep it a bit more relaxed. So we will have other courses such as things like permaculture, decentralized software architecture and design, and uh, nutritional guidance, and wherever else. You know, it's, it's a university. It is not a blockchain university. It is a decentralized autonomous university, the first in the world. And I feel very fortunate to be able to bring this project to life. And uh, if you know people who want to participate as students, please bring them in. Uh, and if you have people who want to teach courses, uh, please reach out to us and I will show you all the information at the end of the video. And uh, you can also find them on our website and it will be listed at the description panel below the video. So looking forward to growing it organic community uh, you know obviously we can't really hype this up and blow it up though as a designer and as an engineer i don't believe that's the correct way to do it uh, we want to be able to provide quality rather than quantity and it's important when things start to you know really take the results work on it uh, take the feedback and gather that kind of information from your audience, from your community, and build something special. And uh, that's what we hope to bring to you. So to start off with, you can see I have this window open, uh, which is the uh, campus.bitopia.org. Put simply, this is our community or university campus let's say uh, it is the place where you can participate in conversations you can create your own chat rooms based on whatever topic you desire to discuss or build a community around and you can join existing channels so you can either go to campus.bitopia.org or the native mobile app is available on google play and app store uh, it's called rocket chat and once you download Rocket Chat, it will ask you to join a server. So for the server name, you can obviously put campus.bitopia.org and then you create a username uh, 
based on your email address or you can use the social uh, logins which would include I believe Google, Facebook, LinkedIn and GitHub. And either way you end up at you know whether it's the app or the web platform you end up here and the campus uh, you can see the conversations without signing in though to participate in conversations you do need to sign in and you can kind of see the updates of what's been going on what's been said it's been minimal uh, because as I said uh, it's much more important to have that foundation and these are the things that I will discuss as well what makes a project uh, more likely to succeed how do you build your community how do you build decentralized uh, applications and i really want to make sure that i point out the aim of this course in particular introduction to decentralization is not to make things complicated it's for the average person to understand what decentralized technologies are and uh, for them to participate in it and to, to remove all that heavy and I would say unnecessary uh, you know, volume of information that gets in the way of people adopting the technology or being a participant or wanting to learn about it. And uh, yeah, so we try and keep things very friendly, user friendly and informative in a way that you know you can take it away and like do what you need to do with it um, and apply it in the way that you believe should be applied so this is the chat room you can go on there it's linked to telegram as well if you have telegram uh, you know you can come on our website bitopia.org and uh, you can access telegram right there and that will bring you to our telegram group telegram is an open source open source uh, variant of a messaging application similar to that of WhatsApp. I like it and a lot of communities that are uh, supporting decentralized technologies and also other people in various, various countries uh, use it because it's open source and uh, the person that created it has done a great job respecting people's privacy and a lot of options you get in there for example you don't need to give someone your phone number like whatsapp uh, you can just create a username hide your phone number in the settings of you know under privacy and then share your username in that way and your username can be anything you want so i like those features and i like that it's open source and uh, yeah a lot of communities and groups are on there so not only will you have access to this by downloading Telegram, uh, you will have access to a great number of the crypto decentralized projects where you can participate and learn about those various projects, uh, etc, etc. Though that will just be one chat room, uh, which will be the campus, though if you go to the actual campus that Bitopia via the app or the web platform, you get access to a lot more uh, channels. So this will be eventually where most uh, of the conversations will take place because we do need a lot more uh, groups than just one. And it gets a bit messy creating, you know, all these different groups within Telegram. Uh, okay, so that's how you get involved in the conversations. If you want to ask questions, if you want to know how the courses are, if you want to uh, suggest people to become students, you can send them there. Or if people have courses, they can come and teach they can also go there anything really you know it's it's where the people are so this is our website you can go to bitopia.org and uh, there you can pre-enroll for our course so I will be going through and contacting the people who have applied and making sure that they know we're gonna start soon and uh, you know just just to reach out so if you have done that i will be reaching out to you soon uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter it's where we will keep you updated with our progress and uh, yeah just keep you informed with updates and what we're up to and what we plan to do and yeah that's pretty pretty straightforward so if you go to pre-enroll and uh, 
you will see that it's quite simple, just name, email address, and what, what are you looking to learn? And I guess the thing to note here is that privacy is an important part of all of this. So, you know, we will keep your information quite safe. Um, I don't intend to keep any logs. So, you know, once we've contacted you and you come in, um, we can get rid of any sensitive information. And this description, obviously, we're not going to share that with, you know, third party uh, organizations to spam you. So, all good. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, that's the YouTube channel. So just to give you an idea, Bitopia was actually born in the Netherlands. It, no, let's put it differently. My mind brought this to a testing platform in 2017 in the Netherlands. It was born in Mexico as a idea and a project in the city of San Cristobal de las Casas in the state of Chiapas. And hopefully it will grow for the time being within the country of Australia. So the YouTube channel is there because of the videos that had been done in the past by myself. Uh, some of them are interviews with different developers to give you an idea of uh, how things work and the uh, other ones are of uh, myself speaking at different events and conferences around the world and uh, yeah so you can check those out and obviously that one's just for telegram so moving forward if you want to pre-enroll you can do it that way i will open this up and uh, it will be designed differently so that we can involve people from various courses, not just the introduction to decentralization. Though, as I said, we would like to uh, move forward on that first because it is our strongest uh, offer and we will tweak it and uh, allow other courses and teachers to participate. And I think it is important to mention that especially right now with what's going on in the world, uh, this idea was conceived prior to that and somehow it has become even more significant to put this forward, as I'm sure you can imagine. So, if you are aware of a decentralized autonomous organization and what that entails, uh, Bitopia is a decentralized autonomous university. And there are some similarities between the two, and I will explore these later. Uh, as I said, I just want to keep it a bit more simple and fun. Uh, though our DAO is hosted on Aragon, and uh, you can simply find it by going to Aragon, by going to mainnet.aragon.org, open an existing organization, the Bitopia Foundation, TBF, and we can open it up. So what does this mean in simple terms? It means our entire foundation organization is decentralized. It means that we are accountable in the way that everything is transparent. And you too can create organizations like this. As I said, it's even more important uh, due to the conditions that a lot of us are experiencing, uh, regardless of geographical location. So. We will, th these are all part of it. And I think once people figure out these tools and how to participate and how to create organizations, use digital currencies to transfer funds, to keep it as a reserve, how to use Bitcoin to buy gold and all these other things that are involved, uh, I think it will change a lot of people's opinion. Because you know, a lot of people think Bitcoin is new, but it's 10 years old. So if you had another technology that was 10 years old and you didn't, you know, as mainstream, or not mainstream, as effective and disruptive as Bitcoin, surely you would know about it. So the entirety of this was, why haven't people figured out how to use Bitcoin? Why isn't there more people using it? And we, we can get into those things uh, later, though that's just to give you an overview. So you can go under and see our governance. You can see what kind of things we're voting on as like board members, uh, if you're a student or a teacher eventually you'll be coming here to request 
uh, your credits or uh, distribution of tokens or whatever else it may be will put up various tasks that need to be done and the rewards for them so it's all automated that's that's the point of an auto, uh, autonomous organization that it's all automated and uh, it's jurisdictionless it doesn't belong to any nation state and um, again these things are quite powerful and we will go over them over time and uh, yeah so I just wanted to also include a piece of, you know, something that I saw on the news, and I hope to do this for future videos, uh, just to kind of give you what we're doing, what we're up to, create a discussion, and also include something that is uh, from recent times, from this week. I believe it was this week, perhaps last, and uh, well, I can check. It was from April 14th. So yeah, it was from last week. Uh, last Tuesday so this way we kind of have a more uh, interactive conversation so this news piece was for me very interesting because it was uh, about the central bank's attempt or push to ban stable coins and those of you who are watching this have never used cryptocurrencies I fully understand and respect that you may not know what a stable coin is and you know, one of my greatest desires is to remove that lack of knowledge and to remove that hardship that people face. I mean, if I didn't know everything that I know, I can only imagine how hard it would be to navigate through these uh, uh, kind of releases, technologies, and various forms of cryptocurrencies and decentralized technologies. So back to the news piece, stablecoin is um, those who may know and those who don't know, a stable coin is basically a cryptocurrency that's pegged to a fiat currency. A fiat currency would be your typical US dollar, uh, your euros, your Australian dollar. And a stable coin is a cryptocurrency that's pegged to that in an attempt to remove volatility because a lot of people fear getting into Bitcoin uh, because it's very volatile. So it allows an entryway. It also allows people to be able to exit into a stable coin when times are uh, making Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies volatile. It, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, the, those are just two to mention. So central banks push for heavy duty regulation of centralized, privately issued global stable coins and consider prohibiting decentralized ones. So it annoyed me when I read this, uh, though it doesn't surprise me. I guess stable coins can be useful and they have a lot of you know different applications within this space and this push is an interesting one because from my opinion it means that people will at the moment especially now when the financial systems globally speaking have been put to their test, let's say. Not that they were ever designed to withstand such a thing. I mean, when you can just print money without requesting much permission, it's, it's easy to um, make it look powerful, let's say. Especially when the whole world is pegged to it. So, most of the world anyway. So it means that people can't purchase stable coins and get some security from that. It means that they can't uh, sidestep into it when there's volatility within the market. It means a few things and removing stable coins and uh, you know they've even mentioned consider prohibiting decentralized ones. I mean if you're keeping up with the news in countries like Australia and the United States they're pushing to Put a backdoor into encryption. I mean, if you understand encryption, you would know that you can't have a backdoor in encryption and it's still called encryption. It defeats the whole point. And uh, that's important to know. And you know, th those are again topics we can cover in uh, privacy and security, just to give the general public an idea on how to navigate through that. Uh, so that would affect, from my opinion, 
uh, cryptocurrencies too, because Bitcoin and other decentralized cryptocurrencies utilize encryption uh, for transactions and that's what keeps them secure. So I'm curious on how that would affect cryptocurrencies and whether it's a side move to that would essentially impact uh, decentralized cryptocurrencies. If you know more about this, reach out to me and let me know too. I would love to know. Uh, but uh, getting rid of the stable coins and you know going after them is an interesting one. Some may argue it's good. You know, you can't have currencies that are unregulated. Some will say no, this is terrible. Some will say screw the stable coins. No one even needed them to begin with. So you can have various perspectives on it. Uh, for me, it was just annoying because. Yeah, as I said, not surprising, but it is annoying, um, especially prohibiting decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, though, I hope by the article they mean prohibiting decentralized stable coins, which would include uh, DAI, uh, which is one of the cryptocurrencies based on Ethereum. Um, but we will see, because DAI has a great amount of application within decentralized finance, and uh, various other applications in the decentralized realm. Um, and it can be pegged to your own token if you create one to give you some stability and security. So yeah, we will see how that goes. And uh, that's it for today. So moving forward, uh, I will bring up our links. So we have a Facebook page. You can go on there and ask questions, Twitter, uh, YouTube to watch some videos. This one will be on there and uh, Telegram if you already have the application. Otherwise, if you're new, campus.bitopia.org and uh, reach out. Let us know if you would like to participate in this uh, in this course in particular, but also other courses that we'll be hosting and uh, as well as if you know people that have courses to offer. And uh, if you want to contribute, you want to collaborate with us, uh, you find the project interesting, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, so my, my time zone uh, is in Australia, so just keep that in mind wherever you are. Today is the 23rd of April, it is currently 4.50 p.m. And uh, yeah, looking forward to building a community and hearing out, hearing, hearing more from the people interested in this project, I believe this project is going to be very special. And it has taken me seven or eight years of full-time experience within a wide array of different projects to come up with this. The bits and pieces that's been included in its design and uh, structure are very unique. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Glad, uh, glad to put this together. So that's what we're doing. Looking forward to hearing from you. Take care, have a great weekend, and hopefully we can do another one next week where I will tell you a bit, a bit more about who I am and uh, a bit more about how the project works, how you get rewarded uh, through the educational uh, protocol and uh, how we aim to change the entire structure and framework behind education. So as I said, nothing like this has ever been done before. This isn't just some online course. Uh, there's a lot behind it that I think will make people quite excited. So take care. Have a great weekend. Hope to see you next week.